what is causing all this inflation that we're seeing right now because a big reason why our economy is slowing down the reason why companies profits are going down is because the cost for products is so high so this high inflation is causing an economic slowdown so the question is what's causing the inflation and you have two sides on this left side i'll put supply chain which will be inventory issues because uh, manufacturers can't produce products you have shutdowns and whatnot the other side is money printing so pretty much up until not that long ago in 2022 everybody in the fed and the government and pretty much every other major executive said that the inflation that we're seeing is only because of supply chain issues the money printing that we did in 2020 and 2021 how could that cause inflation even the treasury secretary janet yellen said that in 2021 that there's no inflation worries they're not only are they not worried about inflation but the new 1.9 trillion dollar stimulus bill would not cause more inflation and then on june 1st 2022 about a year and a half later she admitted that the money printing did cause inflation now still to today the Fed and many people in the government believe that, okay, there is some money printing that's causing inflation. However, the main root inflation that we're seeing, the root of the higher prices is the supply chain. And what's been happening now in the private sector, so not in the government, not in the Fed, what's been happening with some of these executives like I've been talking about is many executives, first you had uh, JP Morgan Chase Bank, you had Deutsche Bank, you had Bank of America, you had a bunch of different institutions, even Morgan Stanley just came out recently saying the same thing, that they're realizing that the supply chain issues, the supply chain, the inventory, that's a part of it. But they're saying that more and more there's money printing is a bigger cause of the inflation now what does that mean because depending on what's causing the inflation that's going to change how you react and fight it because if it's just supply chain issues and an inventory problem well that's a matter of infrastructure and time right you gotta let the bottlenecks ease you gotta just get through this painful time let the ports open back up let factories open back up let more people go back to work not just in the united states but in china and other countries as well and once you do that, then everything will just clear and then the price of things will drop. And even if they don't drop, which is pretty unlikely in that sense, because if a company can sell a marker for $10 and keep doing it, then they're going to be less likely to bring the price of this marker down until a new marker company comes in and then they can sell a marker for a cheaper price. So that's one of the issues with the supply chain. However, the idea here is once things ease, that the supply chain issues will get better and the prices of things will stabilize. And so there's not much that the Fed can really do in that sense. I mean, you can invest in infrastructure, but, you know, private companies really have to make that investment themselves. But if the issue, the root cause is money printing, where low interest rates, quantitative easing and stimulus for people, for businesses, for corporations, for the markets, if that is the root cause of inflation, and that's the reason why the cost of living is going up, well, then that's going to be much more painful to fight. And that's the reason why now the Fed is taking some action on inflation. They are working to raise interest rates. However, they're not getting super aggressive yet. Yes, we are seeing interest rates grow rather quickly, but they could be doing it a lot quicker. And they're not doing that yet because they still hope and believe that the supply chain and the inventory issues are a big factor in the inflation that we're seeing right now. Now, I do feel a little bit bad saying that it's inflation because the word inflation, by definition, means you are inflating the monetary supply, right? You're increasing the amount of money, you're printing money. So just know that when I say this word inflation, I'm not talking about the actual definition of inflation. I'm talking about the prices of things up more expensive now the concern now in those storm clouds that i was talking about and the same thing that the world bank said is what happens now if inflation is causing a slowdown in the economy and this inflation has caused more than the supply chain issues but more because of this money printing then what because if we have this causing inflation the price of things to go up well then this could also be leading to an economic slowdown essentially a recession so if you have a recession with in 
inflation, that's how you lead to stagflation because stagflation is when you have an economy that's slowing. So you have jobs that are being lost and you have companies that are struggling, keeping up, making profits, while at the same time you have a high cost of living because now the prices of everything is so high and that happens now because the valuation of your currency is being devalued while the economy is also struggling. This is a very tough situation and the last time that we saw this sort of stagflation was in the 1970s. And back then, when we had all the stagflation because of all the money printing we did in the early 1970s, that was when we took the dollar off of the gold standard. So our money became fiat currency because before 1971, we couldn't just print money at free will. We needed more physical gold to print money. And so you had to actually produce wealth, in this case gold, in order to produce money, dollars. But then after 1971, President Richard Nixon took the dollar off of the gold standard because the United States was dealing with a lot of issues. We were spending way more money than we were bringing in, kind of like what we're doing now. And in order to prevent a default, he took the dollar off of the gold standard and he said essentially that you cannot convert your dollar for gold. And then they started printing dollars on command. They started printing an insane amount of money to start paying off of their debts. And the issue was, well, that this dollars, these new dollars were not backed by physical gold. They were just currency. It was just pieces of paper. That created a lot of inflation and it entered a period of stagflation where now you had all this inflation and an economic slowdown. And that was when the Federal Reserve Bank in the early 1980s, they had to jack up interest rates to near 20%. If you wanted to buy a home, you were paying 18, 19% a year on your mortgage. So now here we are today trying to figure out where we are. Now remember, the Fed and the government are reactionary. They're not gonna try to be proactive and try to guess this because if they do that, they could cause a recession because if the Fed now is aggressively tightening monetary policies, if the Fed is aggressively raising interest rates, that's pulling money out of the economy and it can cause a stock market crash, it can cause a real estate crash, it can cause a cryptocurrency crash, and that could cause an economic crash and the Fed doesn't wanna do that because, well, they hope that this is what's causing the inflation. If you enjoyed this short clip from my longer videos, here's another clip that I think you'll love and while you're at it, if you're interested in learning more about how to start generating passive income, our team put together an amazing guide that goes over what passive income is, how to start generating passive income, and different passive income strategies. These are things that you can start doing even if you don't have a lot of money. So if you wanna read this free guide on how to start generating passive income for free, all you gotta do is click that button right over there. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling.